If you're not gonna be getting beat down doing it, then you're not doing it right. Up here with my boy Marky Poops today. Party Ranitos. It's his first day in the backcountry this year. It just really wasn't a jump for me to try a double cork at on it at all. We got the eye. That was weird. I've never done that before. Got into Kingfisher Heli Lodge. Cruising with my broski, Cal. There's just this tiny little hole going through the mountain. I could have skied there for the rest of the year. And I'm not telling you where it is because I'm coming back. I kind of consider myself a bit of a fair weather skier. Definitely getting up in the dark. Oh, early. Trying to be on top of the mountain for when the sun rises, to me is a little insane. And, uh, but sometimes that's what we gotta do. Well, another gorgy day in paradise. We pulled in this morning and this zone was just beaming up here with my boy Marky Poops today. It's his first day in the backcountry this year. Yeah, man, Sean P, dude. I don't get to snowmobile too much, so it's really fun when I get out, especially with Shawnee P, who's really good in those mountains. We're gonna fire it up. We're gonna get her started uh, off on the right foot. We got a kicker ready and uh, some good shred laps. It's gonna be a fun day. Ooh, one, I'll call you later. Mark's primarily doing contest all year and I'm primarily in the backcountry all year. He's a snowboarder, I'm a skier, so we're doing completely different sports. But at the end of the day, you know, he's going sideways, I'm going forwards. We're both out there for the same reasons, shred pile and have fun with your buddies. Just had our fun little party runs, and it is the golden hour, and it is time to hit the jump. Jump is in perfect light right now, so. We are uh, gonna have ourselves a nice little session. Feels good to land. You got a first track and a second that track. That was stompy pants, dog. Thanks, dog. Oh. Nice front heavy. Me and Mark, you're gonna play the little game. We have to both do the same trick. Now we're gonna both do, do double cork. Double cork 1080. What are you, where are you grabbing? You know, no matter how much you get beat up and how many times you fall and get black eyes, it only makes you want to try harder and I feel like crashing is all a part of learning, you know. Dude! Woo! I like him! Ah! I know. Oh, <laughs> sharp, that was buddy. dope. I gotta back him up on that. Yes, you do. <laughs> That was a double flare. That was weird. Yeah, I've never done it. Right. That was a flare. Super fast. I, I feel know. like you should go like Faster. maybe a little faster. Someone do. Got snow here, got snow there. And look, still got the eye. You're like, you guys will edit out like that, like when I was crying before, right? <laughs> Kelly's are flying, and we will be up in the air momentarily. Another beautiful day, and me and my boy Marky Poops are gonna uh, fully indulge, shake it up, get some party runs going. You know, Marky's a sledder in training. He's still obviously learning out there how to use the machine, and I think uh, I think he'd much rather use a helicopter, and I have no problem with that.
I'll follow you. Let's just rip wherever we want to go. Drop! You! Yeah, buddy. The differences between uh, sledding and heliing, you know, for a couple of these runs that we were riding in the heli where they're kind of longer runs and, you know, rolly and have a lot of playful features down them, we wouldn't have been able to see from the snowmobile and most likely wouldn't have been able to ride there because you can't even access it from a snowmobile. So having the heli, you know, you really get a new perspective at all the terrain. You get to see everything from every single angle you can, you know, take pictures and you can really assess the situation and see exactly what's going on in all, all your lines. The helicopter is, uh, is huge and makes for better shredding and, and more lines you're gonna be able to ski in a day. Um, let's just party on the shoulder. And we'll just stay close to each other and Groovy. if you wanna go for it, you can go for it. All right, let's give her. It's been such a cool early season being able to spend all this time with all my snowboard homies and uh, it's really put a new perspective on how I look at train and how I can ride it. Stoked for uh, the rest of the season with new perspectives. Our heli day was pretty much an all-time day. You know, I'm just out there with my homie, and I don't even think we had time to stop or and eat a snack because it's uh, that's what it's about. It's just out there cruising and having fun with each other, you know. So we're just packing up, heading to Kingfisher Heli Lodge in the interior. Have some fun. Slippers. Always bring slippers to lodge life. First trip of the year, cruising with my broski Cal. So we're gonna take the Coquihalla Highway up through Kelowna. Vernon and then east from Vernon. Way faster, go north. Mm, no, it's not. I got an idea. How about you go north, I'll go south, and we'll see who gets there first. You want to put a wager on this? Yeah, I want to put a wager on it. We had this big bet that uh, whoever loses the race has to wash the other one's truck. We just left Sean's and Whistler, and I'll probably be fed my first beer before Sean rolls in. Get to get Sean in his little short shorts, just sit back and watch him scrub my truck down. Hello? Well, we just fueled up, and then as soon as I got back in the truck, um, it's a service brake system, and I went and checked, and my brakes are, my brake loop's leaking, so. I'm gonna be scrubbing his Dirty track. Thumbs down. He's calling. Cal's calling. Uh, I, think, I think you're going to win. Why's that? My truck broke down. What? Um, so congratulations. We made it to Kingfisher Heli Lodge late last night. Cal, sure enough, ended up here at some point last night and gonna get up there, see what the train's all about. We're excited. Flying around in uh, these pretty heavy clouds, we found the sucker hole, managed to fly through. He's got us to this golden little zone. The snow is very powy, a little zone called Pillow Talk. I love Pillow Talk, so. I think I'm gonna like this one. <laughs> Whoa! That was so fun.
we flew by this zone, all of a sudden this little archway in the mountain where you could see light coming through this rock. And so I dropped in, had to duck through the cave, pointed it out and was on top of another pretty sick line and then aired off and then almost goal posted a, a tree right to my shoulder, but just landed right beside a tree. And then uh, the guides told me that no one has ever skied it. So I decided to name it the pee hole. The whole trip we've been here, you know, the guides have been talking about this zone that we have to go to. And then finally, the last day here, get up in the heli, came around the corner. They were right. It was like the sickest zone that, that we've seen in me and Cal, both just line after line after line after line and hit over here, over there. And it was just so fun to be able to be in this one little bowl and just have, honestly, endless options of what to do. I could have skied there for the rest of the year and been doing a new line every time. It was insane. Oh yeah, yeah, the tires and the rims, a lot of dirt in there. I must say, Cal, it feels pretty good to win. Look <laughs> it up, bud. I am. I'm so stoked that Cold Rush is finally back here in Revelstoke. I think everyone's pretty happy about that. I decided I was gonna come out here and cook you guys my new menu. Frog's leg protein. We're dealing with weather, we're managing it. It's gonna be worth it, because the conditions are so good right now. That is by far the biggest natural double backflip I have ever seen in my life. 